not enough for me to give to God a begrudging yes, or a yes in which I think I know how everything will turn out, or a yes in which I try to manipulate the outcome. What draws the Logos, the word to me, as surely as it took up residence with Mary, is the yes that I give without any idea of how that outcome is going to be. It's not important for me to know what that yes will look like. It's only important that I say yes. That is all God wants from me, and that's all he asks from me. That's all he's asking is that I say yes, and he will do the rest. So what I want to do now is reread this passage, because it isn't just that he's saying, hail, favored one to Mary, he says it to you. He's asking you, will you let this son, will you let my word be born in you? Will you give it life? Will you let him enter into you and bring him to life in your spirit? So now, if you want the biggest example of that, Mother Teresa. When you look at her, you saw God. You saw Jesus. John Paul II. When you looked at him, you saw Jesus. Because he opened up and said yes no matter what that looked like, in the midst of his dying and in his suffering. And if any of you have read Mother Teresa's book, you know she was in darkness and she suffered. In the midst of that, she said yes. She always said yes. She always said yes to God, however hard it is. So I want to reread that again. And then what I would like to do is just have us go through a little exercise. But when, you, when I reread this again, I want to go a little bit slower because I want you to, to really place yourself there. Now, this is you he's speaking to. This is you. So I might um, change the words just a little to make it more personal. And by the way, when you read scripture, don't be afraid to change the words and make it personal and put your name in there. You would be amazed at how that affects you, you know. So, so just close your eyes again, if you would like. And now this is God sending Gabriel to you. We're almost ready to go into Advent. And what an incredible, wonderful time to open ourselves up and to ask him, be born in me again, Lord. Be born in me. Help me, Mother, to give birth to that little baby again. And help me to bring him to full stature within me so that when people see me, they see some image of God because we are all made in his image. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Oregon called Klamath Falls to men and women who came for a day to spend time with him. And coming here, he said to each one of them, Hail, favored one. The Lord is with you. But each of us in our hearts are puzzled by this. How can God be with me? But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Behold, I want you to conceive in your womb and bear my son. 
He will be great because he is the Son of God. And so we say, but how can this be? I have no gifts. I have no virtue. I am a sin-filled person. How can this be? But Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore, you can give birth to God within you. For nothing is impossible Can we hear ourselves say, I am your handmaid, Lord. I am your servant, Lord. Let it be done to me as you wish. I will it, Lord. I wish it. I yearn for it. Help me to bring him to birth again in the world that is so filled with violence. Help me to birth love again in the world, Lord. I say yes. I just want to leave us with that for a minute before I go on. But I want you to pay close attention to what was in your heart at the time, to your emotions, to what you were feeling. Now I would like you to do another exercise. I would like you to take about five or six minutes and recall a difficult situation that you've had in your life or perhaps you have something going on in your life right now that's difficult. I know the last year has been one heck of a year for me. Okay, and I'm sure all of us can recall sometime within this last year when it's been really difficult, or maybe right now. Maybe you've just come through a crisis. Perhaps there's a friend or an acquaintance that you have a broken relationship with. Perhaps it's your spouse. Perhaps it's a sibling. Whatever it is, I'd like you to take a few minutes to call it to mind and to be present to it, to be present to the emotions, to allow yourself to feel. <clears throat> 